Good morning, Asia. Fellow privateers, welcome to the Asian preview for the final day of the trading week. North American wrap. Got the daily close charts up. I'd like to take a look at these this time of day. You can see where Euro settled just above 125, the figure. The high daily close of this entire move has been uh, has been looks like 125.08, and the high today has been 125.10. So the market's watching this. Generally, Thursdays are not the high or low of the week in currencies. Um, we like to look at the let's say the dollar. Let's say dollar yen is in a downtrend. It likes to make Wednesday highs counter trend and then <clears throat> trade lower Thursday Friday and uh, close on or near the lows of the week that's kind of what I'm expecting tomorrow uh, similar to euro I suspect we take out these old highs of 125.38 and we we get a new high daily and weekly closes you can also look at these charts here on the weekly here's the uh, euro dollar weekly so let's say we closed right here to end the week the old high weekly close was 124.51. So we're above that right now, but we've got another, you know, 24 hours of trading left. So these are things that we, we like to look at. Closing price, once again, is by far the most important price, and that doesn't matter if it's on any time frame. There's a lot of noise, uh, you know, intra-period, intra-hour. British pound closing up here. Um, 140.94 that's been been pretty strong we did get above just above the figure Australian dollars had a nice bounce and dollar yen we've been watching this the past few days here we are again once we closed under this 107.80 area which was uh, some weekly and uh, daily and weekly closes old closes we have gone straight down and now we are approaching let's scroll back a little bit we have not been not had a daily close this low since way back in that must have been that would have been right before the election the Trump election in uh, 2016 that was 106 uh, sorry 105.25 and then this was the election low close right before the election in, in November, so 2016. So, you know, we are approaching some important levels. We've looked at um, some of the Fibonacci retracements. We pop over dollar yen on the, get the weekly up again. Uh, this is really nothing new. Fill this gap we talked about. This big FIBO retracement, 103.08. You know, we do have some old highs down here at 105.50. I, I think with this 105.50, there, there, there's supposed to be some bids, 60, 70. So I think that that will stall it. Um, there are there are several hundred dollars of bids uh, right around this 106. So that there clearly there's a um, there's some sort of barrier which makes sense so th this should slow the descent a bit but you know they, they've been selling it a lot in Asia and there's were some reports out where um, you know the Japanese are now selling US bonds there were some big outflows uh, foreign central foreign reserve uh, or foreign uh, US bond holdings by foreign countries of have uh, there were huge outfalls last week so that's not a great uh, that's not great for dollar yen either um, we can touch more on that over the weekend when I do some of my weekend reading but there were there's a couple of good reports out about the appetite for US bonds by uh, foreigners so anyhow, yeah, there's dollar yen euro we looked at we're close we're right up here 120 just closing above 125 Cabled right around 141 the figure. Fix came off a little bit, which was surprising with the 
nice rally that we saw in stocks. S&P up 1.4%, NASDAQ's up 2%, VIX was down about a half percent today. Uh, we are waiting, well, we, we, we're nibbling on the short side here in uh, S&Ps, looking for this retracement up here at 2745. We should get that tomorrow. Again, it's one of these, you know, generally the market's not making a higher low of the week on a Thursday. So our best guess, what is it, 10 handles from here? I would imagine we get up there tonight either in Asia or in uh, tomorrow in North America. Uh, as far as the economic calendar goes, oh, and there aren't any great shorter-term setups that, that are jumping out at me. Um, you know, the yen crosses are, are hanging in there. Sterling yen, this chart is an absolute disaster. I mean, look at this huge wick doji day. Push down. It's 149. The figure looks important. And um, it's basically, you know, just been kind of sideways to negative. And you know, we still like this lower. We still think it can go down to go back down and test this old, this old area down here, which is way down at 147 the figure. Um, and, you know, this thing moves 50, 100 points every 15 minutes, it seems. So, uh, again, nothing really jumping out at us. As far as uh, data goes, uh, we have the Chinese Lunar New Year is starting, so they're, they're going to be off for a bit. We have retail sales out of the UK and Europe, and we have some second tier numbers, housing starts, building permits out of the US. Uh, it looks like Corota was named, uh, the, it was uh, named uh, BOJ governor again for a second term. Uh, there was some talk about replacing him with uh, Wakata, Wakata Bay, I think it is, or he was a deputy governor, but the dollar yen uh, initially it did rally a bit, um, thinking it might be someone that's uh, might be a, a bit more aggressive with the Bank of Japan's easing stance. Uh, but it does look like it's Corona, so that shouldn't change the trajectory at all of dollar yen and cross yen. Anyhow, good luck trading. Final day of the week. If anyone, you know, most of you might be on holiday, taking a little bit of a break, long weekend off next week. Uh, you will hear from us on the European Open. Good luck. Cheers.